for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. It's the last day of the Madden 24 ratings drops. And we got the big position Woo! today, the quarterback position. So I might spend a little extra time going over that because this is obviously the star, you know, position of probably all the sports. So we're going to go over that. We also got top 20 linebackers, uh, the quarterbacks of the defense. And we're going to start off with that first. Now, starting off with 11 to 20, I don't really have a ton of issues typically when it comes to the 11 to 20 range. Uh, the only thing I would say is TJ Edwards last year was like a 90 overall in PFF. I know he doesn't get the ratings love because, you know, he wasn't, a, you know, he wasn't even drafted. So to see him in an 82, I mean, I like that he's in the top 20, but I feel like he should have been closer to the top 10, maybe in like the top 12 or something like that. Because like I said, he was, he was a PFF all pro uh, last year and watching him play all year. He was phenomenal. It's going to be a big loss for the Eagles defense, but I don't really have a ton of issues after that. I think Leighton Van Der Esch probably could be a little bit higher too, but there's a couple guys here that could be a little bit higher. Uh, so let's go and let's move on to the top 10 linebackers because I want to spend most of this video talking about the quarterbacks. And I like the, the ranking of these guys, but I don't like some of their ratings. Fred Warner, I agree, probably the top linebacker, but I don't think he's that much further ahead, four points further ahead than Roquan Smith. Not really sure about that. Um, I feel like a couple of the lower-rated guys should be higher. Shaq Leonard's been one of the best linebackers in the year, but coming off of an injury last year and losing a lot of time really hurts a lot of these guys' ratings. I don't really understand that. Him or Jonathan Taylor, I just feel like they wanted to make that entire team lowly rated. But, I mean, Shaq Leonard is still one of the best linebackers in the game when healthy. So to see him... Um, you know, come all the way down here at an 86 doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think Dre, Dre Greenlaw should be a little bit higher too. He's an underrated player. Nick Bolton with a with a quite a jump, really good player. Had a monster Super Bowl. Uh, it's good to see him up here. The one that I probably have the biggest issue with is Bobby Wagner at an 89. I know last year he went under the radar. He played at an All Pro level last year in LA, and there was nobody around him playing at that level, with the exception of maybe Aaron Donald. But that entire team was just terrible. But he played like it was a Super Bowl every week. That dude, to me, putting him in an 89 is disrespectful. I think he should be, like, to me, he still feels like a, a, a like a, like a 95 or something like that. Like, he should be much higher. I think Roquan Smith and him should be closer to Fred Warner in the, as far as a number. But to have him top five, I guess, you know, they're, they're basically calling it. They're saying he's old, but... To me, he still plays at such a high level. I don't really agree with that. He should at least be a 90. I'm cool, cool with the top five, but I would at least I probably have him ahead of Demario Davis and maybe Levante David. I probably have him third on the linebackers, and like I said, I'd probably have Roquan Smith at like a 95, and maybe Bobby Wagner at like a 94 or something like that. I would have those guys a lot higher. So not a big deal though. I'm not really worried about. It. Let's move on to quarterbacks. This is where the all the stars are, I guess. Now, I'm going to start off this list all the way at the bottom with Justin Fields and his criminal rating of a 76. I know he didn't do a ton passing last year. I know that. But the dude was an electric playmaker. He, To me, he should have superstar ability or something this year. The way he was cutting defenses up running the ball last year was unreal. He's got some weapons around him now, so I'm sure he'll improve as a passer. He'll be more of a dual-threat player. I, I got nothing but I'm, I'm, I'm buying Justin Fields' future. And if you're not, you should ask yourself why. Because he's a, he's just an amazing talent. And he always was. I remember the year that he came out of college. It was the entire year. It was like Trevor Lawrence, number one, Justin Fields, number two. And then the draft happened, and somehow he went like 13th or 11th or something like that, which never made sense. Because all year, all the mock guys had Lawrence and, and Fields one and two, one and two. Um, and I still feel like they're they're a lot closer than people are giving them credit. Uh, but yeah, after that, I mean, who are you taking over Justin Fields on, on uh, when it comes to guys like Russell Wilson, who had an historically bad year last year, or Jimmy Garoppolo, who really is just like captain average, captain game manager, or Deshaun Watson, who he's kind of he lost a year or two, and I know he didn't play great last year, but off of just last year's performance alone, are you taking any of those three guys over Justin Fields? I'm not. So I would definitely have Justin Fields closer to the top 15. I'm not going to make a huge deal about it. Uh, after that, I think Derek Carr's a little underrated. I think he's going to show people out in New Orleans. I think he should at least be an 80. He's kind of in the Jared Goff territory. I think Kyler Murray should be rated a little higher, too. I know that last year he was on a singing ship, and he didn't really care. But um, I think he's going to show he's more talented than that at some point. Uh, other than that, the only person I really have an issue with on this list is Trevor Lawrence. I think Trevor Lawrence probably deserves to be in the top 10 of quarterbacks right now. I know his first year wasn't great. His second year was a lot better. But overall, I think that I would have him ahead of some guys. We'll go We'll go to the top 10. I would probably, I mean, I'd definitely take him over Kirk Cousins. I'd probably have him behind Aaron Rodgers. You know what I mean? I'd probably have him like in an 85 behind, behind Aaron Rodgers. 
Um, this is kind of, I mean, this whole entire list here, I, I like Tua being in the top 10, and I think he should be rated a little higher too. So it's like I don't really know, you know, if, I, if I'm trying to squeeze Trevor, Trevor Lawrence in this list, I don't really know who falls out. I'd probably have Kirk Cousins fall out. I'd probably move Tua and um, Trevor Lawrence up to an 85 because I think they're both kind of in that range and knock Kirk Cousins out because he's he's just kind of, he's just captain average. Uh, after that, I mean, there's a couple of guys in here I have a bigger issue with, but let's start at the top. So we got Patrick Mahomes at 99, which I called earlier in the week. I said that EA was going to have a different 99 overall player revealed every day, and that's exactly what happened with Trevor with uh, Patrick Mahomes. Joe Burrow at 95, I like that. I think that's really on point. I wouldn't mind having him at like a 96. I feel like the gap between him and Patrick Mahomes isn't that close, especially when Burrow typically wins the head-to-head matchups where he's won three out of four. Um, Josh Allen, the cover athlete, I think that's appropriate, 20, uh, 94. Lamar Jackson at a 91. He had a pretty good year last year before he got injured. A lot of people remember, uh, forget that. But I think his rating went up, um, which is kind of weird because he did finish the year injured, and a lot of guys that are injured seem to go down. But I don't have a problem with him being fourth. He's absolutely broken in this game, especially as a running quarterback. I mean, he, he feels like the best running back in the game. I've said that in previous videos. He is a monster. Ravens are going to get a lot of use in this upcoming year. Then number five, we got Jalen Hurts. Now, this surprises me. As an Eagles fan, I was ready to fight uh, today. I think Jalen Hurts should be like a 90 in reality, but I was expecting an 89 rating. That was my expectation. And I, I, for some reason, I didn't think he'd be in the top five either. I thought I thought Herbert would be ahead of him, maybe even Aaron Rodgers, um, you know, because that's where you've seen in a lot of lists. I definitely think he deserves top five. I think, to me, he's probably in the running for the fourth best quarterback behind the uh, you know, Mahomes, Burrow, and Allen, but I have no problem with Lamar Jackson being ahead of him because he's played longer, and he's been playing at a higher level longer too. So I'm cool with where he is, and I'm cool with the rating because, like I said, I was expecting 89, which, you know, he's not too – I'm only one point off. Justin Herbert at six surprises me. Like I said, I kind of thought he would be ahead of Jalen Hurts. And then, obviously, you know, the fact that I'm an Eagles fan, the rivalry hate comes out. Dak Prescott at 87 – tied with the same rating as Justin Herbert. I'm not even a huge Justin Herbert fan, but I know they're not on the same level by any means as far as, um, you know, talent. You know what I mean? Like maybe accomplishments because Dak has played for a long time and he definitely has, um, you know, they're very similar in a lot of ways as far as like regular season success but not a lot of playoff success. So I do see the comparisons there, but I'm asking Cowboys fans. Most Cowboys fans I know don't even like Dak Prescott. They don't think that he's good enough or talented enough to take them anywhere. They blame him for the fact that the team can't seem to get past the second round or a lot of times past even the first round. And the truth is I, I think that I don't even have to be the one hating on Dak. I'm pretty sure Cowboys fans will support that in the comment section. But Dak Prescott led the league in interceptions last year. And I think only played like 12 games. So somehow having his worst year, his rating really was unaffected. He has a tied rating. I mean, I definitely think Justin Herbert is better than that. Like I said, I'm not even a Justin Herbert fan. I think he's a little bit overrated. But I definitely think he's, I definitely take him over Dak Prescott. And the fact that they're the same rating is kind of kind of weak. Uh, it's, it's just not good. And only one point behind Hurts. I think Hurts outplayed Prescott by like a mile last year. He should be more than a point apart. And I wouldn't take Dak Prescott over Aaron Rodgers either. Didn't Aaron Rodgers beat Dak Prescott last year with a much worse team in, in Dallas? So let me know in the comments section what you guys think. I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. This is it for ratings week. I'm probably not going to do any more Madden 24 previews with the exception of my team previews, like best team, you know, which I've already started. Uh, and I'll continue that next week. So if you guys want me to continue that, make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comments section because I will be doing that. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.